What is it about Mr. Trump that made you a Trump candidate? Well, I wouldn't call myself a Trump candidate, but I will say that uh, I was, uh, uh, personally, I was very offended by President Trump. And I think some of the things that he said, some of the things that were caught, some of the audio, as maybe some of you uh, remember, I don't think I want to actually say it on camera, but um, he said some things that were very um, abusive to women. And this is something that's become a huge issue now. As you can see, it's really an exploding issue. You have a lot of people who are uh, uh, having to leave their jobs because of uh, sexual harassment and that sort of thing. And I felt that Trump's attitudes on that and on women were, were so regressive that um, it really offended me. It offended millions of other women, too. I'm not the only one. And in fact, what happened was I heard from Emily's List, which is an organization that, um, where women candidates go when they're thinking about running. And Emily's List said that uh, 11,000 women had come to uh, them and said that they wanted to run for office after Trump won. So I think uh, it, he was an inspiration, and then I think that the Women's March was really important. That was uh, a big event. And in fact, I went to an event for me a couple of weeks ago where all the organizers were there, and I was very honored by that. I think that brought a lot of people together. And, I, and then also, um, you know, I was asked by a couple of local party chairs whether I would consider running. And um, once you start thinking about what you can do for this district, it's kind of irresistible. OK, where do, you, where do most of your donations come from? I've had two donations that came from uh, what we call PACs. And one is a PAC that uh, is an environmental PAC called Oceans PAC. Mm -hmm. And they are dedicated to protecting the world's oceans. And the other is a pack of the Congress of, uh, of uh, Gynecologists and Obstetricians, which is um, women's doctors. Okay. And the rest have come from, and one came from a congressman's pack, mm -hmm. a Democrat, Democratic congressman, and all the rest have come from um, individual people. And they range from the most you're allowed to give for a donation at this point is $2,700. But you can also give $5. So I've had the whole range. And I've had people from all over the country and, and a lot of people from the district, a lot of people from Rappahannock, from other counties like Bedford. I've got lots of supporters in Bedford, Fluvanna, Charlottesville. And um, what is it like to be in the campaign? It's really great. People ask, you know, it's, it's very... Um, it's very intense. You're doing stuff every day. Mm -hmm. Things like this, but maybe two or three events like this in a day. Um, but yesterday we had a meeting with our whole campaign staff, and they're from the whole district, which goes all the way down to the North Carolina border. Mm -hmm. And it was so inspiring. Everybody stood up and talked about why they decided to join this campaign and talked about their past. And it was a really, um, I was so thrilled by it. It just made me realize that a campaign is not about one person. It's about a lot of people. It's about a group of people who get together and then through them it just expands and you have more and more people. We're getting volunteers. I've got um, a bunch of UVA students oh. who are now interns who are working hard on the campaign. Um, because you travel a lot, what is your favorite restaurant in the district? <laughs> Well, uh, in Rocky Mount, which is way down in Franklin County, the restaurant everyone goes to is called Ippies. Mm -hmm. So I like Ippies. And then there's the um, Lovingston Cafe in Nelson. I like that. Mm -hmm. uh, in Charlottesville, I like Seaville Coffee because that's a big Democratic hangout. And, of course, the best restaurants are in Rappahannock. So we all know that. Yeah. Is there anything you would do to help the Health Care Act without, without repealing it? Yes. Yes, I would. I think that repealing the act is a disaster, would be a disaster. I think what's happening, look, this is what's happening now. 
the point of it was to get as many people as possible into the pool so that it would be less expensive for everyone and for people who can't really can't afford health care and there are a ton of people in this district who cannot for them um, you need that big pool so it gets cheaper and cheaper and also the government was basically subsidizing insurance companies to allow them to have those cheaper policies but still give people good uh, offer them good health care you know people who would had problems before it's called pre-existing conditions when you already had a problem it used to be that you could just be denied health care because you'd had a problem before and with the Affordable Care Act suddenly they said by law you had to be given health care even though you'd already had a problem so that's a good idea and I want to keep that definitely the Affordable Care Act because it's um, it had a bit of kind of a slightly wonky relationship with insurance companies it needed improvement it needed fixing but everybody on the hill knew that although everyone in Washington knew that if you take out the pins and dismantle it what Trump has done is he said okay I'm not going to subsidize those insurance companies anymore and now in Charlottesville I mentioned Charlottesville it's the most expensive health plan now in the world because most of the insurance companies have pulled out they said we're not going to do this so there's one left and they're charging huge sums more than people can afford okay. you've written books are there any similar similarities between writing and running for Congress the question is what's the similarity between writing books and running for Congress uh, one big similarity is it's really a lot of work it's a lot of work to write a book it's very rewarding when you finish it but it can take years it can take a year it might even take five years to write that book and there's so much that goes into it and a congressional campaign is exactly the same there are all these stages I'm now six months into the campaign and it's getting very busy so right now I'm moving up to what we call the caucus convention you've heard about a primary but we don't have primaries so we have a caucus convention where all the Democratic candidates will be vying with each other to get delegates to vote for them to win the convent at the convention so we're working up to that stage now so we're all looking for delegates people who will want to represent us in the caucuses in each of the 21 counties and the two other jurisdictions um, so that's another stage and once you're finished with that you go into another stage which is called the general election when we actually whoever wins uh, goes on to fight the uh, the main the Republican in what is called incumbent the person who's in Congress right now who's a freshman congressman so uh, that's like writing a book do you want to take all guns away <laughs> who, who said that Oh uh, well, do you think like you do you think Donald Trump sh like Trump should take away all guns, or do you think like he's going to take all guns away at a certain point? Okay, let's let's begin here. No politician running in Virginia would ever suggest that all guns be taken away because they would never win. Um, so let me tell you how I feel about guns. I grew up in a household of hunters. My parents were big hunters. They loved to hunt. Uh, birds, they love to hunt deer, they love, they used to even go up to Alaska and hunt moose and hunt uh, ptarmigan on the glaciers. So they, when I was a teenager, I had my first hunting license. But what was I learning? I was learning gun safety. I was learning to shoot the birds rather than to shoot other hunters. So that was a very important thing. So I would never take a hunter's gun away from a hunter because I loved hunting, you know, I really enjoyed it. So, but later on I became a journalist and in my journalism I covered the world and I covered a lot of wars, which meant that I had the opportunity to see weapons of war and what they did to people all over, Iraq, Afghanistan, Somalia, you name it. Um, because I saw that, I learned that I really didn't want the 5th District of Virginia to ever look like Mogadishu in Somalia where they were shooting anti-aircraft weapons but on the ground at people or rocket propelled grenades 
This is something we don't want here. So there's a big difference between a hunting weapon, between a you know, 12-gauge shotgun, and a weapon of war. And you know that because you saw what happened in Las Vegas and you saw what happened at the church. Um, we need to stop that. But it doesn't mean we need to stop people having guns. There are things you can do to stop people with, uh, who, have, uh, who, who really are not the sort of people who should have weapons, and certainly not weapons of war. We can, we can uh, make those changes. Thank you. What is your opinion on illegal immigration? My opinion on illegal immigration is that, um, let's think about immigration and the, the immigration that we're concerned about. First of all, I was just talking yesterday to a big organization in Richmond that thinks about agriculture. In Virginia, we have farms that need people to work on these farms, and it requires the people who come and get those jobs are immigrants. So if we didn't have any immigrants, what would happen to the poultry farms? What would happen to the apple farms? Well, they would probably fall apart and might close down. So we need immigrants. We need immigrant labor. We need to have laws that protect them, and we need to protect. You know about DACA, which is the DREAMer program, so that it protects. We need to protect the children of illegal immigrants who are born in this country or who, who arrive in this country where they're five years old or eight years old, those children become Americans. They grow up and they are Americans. They wouldn't know what to do in Mexico. So the idea of, and there are hundreds of thousands of them. In fact, there's one on my campaign. So the idea of sending those kids, or even young adults, back to across the border is, in my view, absolutely wrong. So uh, I support immigrants being here. We're all immigrants, unless we're Native Americans. And I'm very conscious of that, and we should all be. But our economy actually depends on immigrants. It's important to remember that. Um, how, do you think that Fe how do you think FEMA dealt with the recent hurricanes? Well, FEMA has always been a troubled organization, I think. And uh, I think that what happened in Puerto Rico was a disaster. Uh, Puerto Rico was treated in the course of this as though they weren't American. They were treated as though they were somehow second class and shouldn't get the kind of help that all the rest of us would expect. So I thought that was absolutely wrong. And I think in Texas, you know, people are still waiting for uh, people who had terrible problems with their houses, terrible, you know, th th who need the money to fix the house, they're still waiting. So all of that. I think we need to streamline and better organize FEMA. And also, when you have problems in places like Puerto Rico, we shouldn't treat Puerto Rico like it's full of second-class citizens. Thank you. What is your favorite thing about being a writer? My favorite thing about being a writer is I love words. And what I've learned about words is that even though I'm much older than you are, I'm still learning to speak English. You can spend every year of your life learning new words and figuring out how to put words together. And learning language is a beautiful thing. So um, I love words. I love, uh, um, I love being sort of in the footsteps or in the... In the um, the Shadow of Great Writers. I love reading, and uh, if you love reading, then it's an easy step to love writing, I think. Since Congress is so big, do you think it will make a difference in our country? Our country is governed if, you're, if you are elected. Yes, it will make a difference, because um, everyone counts. You know, we want more and more people elected to add to the, there's some excellent people in Congress right now, in my view. There's a whole group of people I would love to work with. And uh, they want me to join them, and I want to join them. So the more people you have, the more you can get good legislation passed. Look what just happened in the election in Virginia. 
suddenly the House of Delegates is full of all these new people, a lot of women. It's a whole different place right now. You have much more equal numbers. And right now they're doing recounts, so we'll see. It might even change even more. But it makes a big difference to uh, what comes out, what kind of legislation happens, and what comes out of it. So you just have to add one person at a time. And I think, I think in 2018 there's going to be a, a tidal wave of new people. Thank you. And what is one of your favorite books you've ever read? Hmm, favorite books. I have a lot of favorite books. What kind of book? Like a fiction, nonfiction? Fiction. Um, well, one of my favorite writers, you may never even have heard of him, his name is Joseph Conrad. And he wrote a book called Lord Jim, and I love that book. I highly recommend it. He was very influential in my life. Thank you. Welcome. That's a wrap. Well done. Well done, crew. All right. Thank you, Buster. <laughs> Buster, well done. <laughs>